Hello, my name is Sharon Dolan, and I'm a poet and the translator of the Catalan poet Gemma Gorga, who is here with me today to read from our forthcoming translation of her work, Late to the House of Words, Selected Poems of Gemma Gorga, which is forthcoming from Saturnalia Books in the fall of this year. We're going to read four poems from the collection. I'm going to read in English, and then she, Gemma Gorga, will read in Catalan. So this is the first poem, and you'll see how connected it is to language and how the world that we live in is really the, the world of, of language. And um, you'll hear the title of the collection within this poem. It's called Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. We showed up late to the house of words. Now we grope our way downstairs as painful as vertebrae and search between the walls plastered shards for some living syllable, sister to bread and poverty to bring to our lips, such as a name, a woman's name, the bone of a woman's name lost between the stones of these walls that once upon a time housed flesh inside, and perhaps a jewel, a little box, a mirror you could ask so many things. Hello, nice to be here. It's a pleasure to share this time. I'm going to read the same poem in Catalan. Digan Mirall. Van fer tard a la casa de les paraules. I ara baixem a les palpentes, escales adolorides com vèrtebres. I busquem entre el que els sobra alguna síl·laba viva, germana del pa i la penúria, per dur-nos els llavis. Com ara un nom, un nom de dona, l'os d'un nom de dona, extraviat entre les pedres d'aquests murs que un dia foren habitats carn endins. I potser un joiell, una capseta, un mirall a qui poder preguntar tantes coses. The next poem I'm going to read is a kind of creation myth or an alternate creation myth. It's called, So Then She. With flour and water, she worked his body. With flour and saliva, she conceived, leaned, learned that with flour and both hands, you reach the secret pliability of matter. With flour, and lips, she worked the man down to the unbearable elasticity of tenderness. Then slowly, she tasted his body, the bread that was his body, bread that fit as well in her hands as does light on earth. I aleshores ella, amb farina i aigua, treballava el seu cos. Amb farina i saliva concebia, inclinava, aprenia que amb farina i dues mans s'arriba el dúctil secret de la matèria. Amb farina i llavis treballava l'home fins a l'elasticitat insuportable de la tendresa i aleshores lentament estava el seu cos, el pa que era el seu cos, el pa que s'emmotllava tan bé a les mans com la llum a la terra. The next poem I'm going to read is about loss and it has an elegiac tone to it. And I think we're all having a sense of loss these days. And so I thought this would be a perfect poem to read right now. And it's called Elegy. Long ago before the continents were divided and we began counting our lives in years, it was still possible to pick up a pin prick a hole in the porous shell and joyfully suck the embryonic yellow of the yolk mixed with the egg whites, moist light. A journey through secret tunnels displaced matter and food from one concavity to another, from the slippery darkness of beginnings to the definitive darkness of the throat. That was a long time ago when hens laid eggs in the improvised shadow of four planks, 
when dogs gnawed on carcasses and Sunday leftovers and seemed happy, when bacteria hadn't colonized all the meridians of fear, microscopes slept, and we ate in peace the simple fruit of the earth. Yes, somehow it seems prophetic, but the poem is inspired in, in my childhood when I used to, to eat raw these eggs, you know, and, and live without thinking that everything was harmful or threatening or whatever. This is real happiness. <laughs> Allergia. Temps enrere, abans que se separessin els continents i comencéssim a comptar en anys les nostres vides, encara era possible agafar una agulla de cap, picar un foradet en la closca porosa i xuclar amb delit el groc embrionari del rovell, barrejat amb la llum mullada de la clara. Un viatge per túnels secrets desplaçava matèria i aliment d'una concavitat a una altra, de la foscor lliscadissa dels inicis a la foscor definitiva de la gola. D'això fa molt de temps, quan les gallines ponien ous a l'ombra improvisada de quatre taulons, quan els gossos rosegaven carcanades i sobralles dominicals i semblaven feliços, quan els bacteris no havien colonitzat tots els meridians de la por, els microscopis dormien i nosaltres menjàvem en pau els fruits senzills de la terra. This is the final poem that I'm and we are going to read and it's the last poem in the collection and it comes from Gemma Gorga's most recent collection of poems and it's called Decreation. Learn from crabs the peaceful art of going backwards. Learn to unlearn, go shoeless, digress. Surprise yourself yet again. Look at an apple until you liberate it from the fine dust of allegory. Know nothing about what you should know. Forget artificial rhetoric and the boring mechanics of the atom. Look without saying, I am looking. Love without saying, I am loving. Leave verses unfinished. Leave verses. Leave. De creixement. Aprendre dels crancs, l'art pacífic d'anar enrere. Aprendre a desaprendre. Descalçar-se, desviar-se, sorprendre's i de nou sorprendre's. Mirar una poma fins a alliberar-la de la polsina de l'alegoria. No saber res del que s'ha de saber. Oblidar la retòrica sintètica i la mecànica avorrida de l'àtom. Mirar sense dir estic mirant. Estimar sense dir estic estimant. Deixar els versos inacabats. Deixar els versos. Deixar. Gràcies, Gemma. Thank well, you, Shannon. <laughs> you know, I began translating your work with the Book of Prose Poems, Book of Minutes. And of course, um, we had both talked about the fact that we were both not really prose poets, but yet that's what drew me to your work initially. And that's the first book I translated. And then here I was finally coming to the rest of your work, the majority of your work, the lion's share of your work, which is really mm -hmm verse, um, poetry written in lines. And, um, and it was a delight to sort of come back to thinking about the line in poetry, which to me is so primary. Um, and, and I've loved, it's been a labor of love. I've loved translating your work. I'm, I'm wondering what it's been like for you to be translated by me. What has that experience felt like in our exchanges going back and forth? Um, yeah. Yes. It's, it's a strange sensation because it's the, the opportunity of revisiting the poems from another point of view. It's from outside 
but at the same time from inside. So sometimes when when you um, asked me about some detail, I, I really had to think twice because because I I didn't remember. <laughs> so it's it's like entering again in my own work from a different door. It's right. Right. Very strange. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, and, you know, I was trying to think because, of course, you know, I'm a poet as well. I was trying to think if it had somehow influenced my writing, mm -hmm. um, if it made me think differently, differently about my work. I, I have a feeling it's an unconscious process that it may be has seeped into my own in, into my own writing. I'm not yet sure exactly how, but I know I in the same way that I worry over where to where to end the line i worried about each one of your lines and when you would break the line at a noun or when you would break the line at a preposition i would think about it of course the syntax of english is not nearly as as flexible it's different than than catalan okay. so uh, there were differences of course um, and then I'm just thinking about the, the final poem where um, I remember talking to you about it in Decreation, where in the Catalan, it's not actually written in the imperative. And I asked you, I felt it somehow in English, it would not really work as well to say, you know, to learn from crabs the peaceful art of going backwards, to, you know, to, to look without saying that somehow putting it in the imperative, saying, look, without saying you're looking that somehow it would be much more effective. I mean, that was um, a liberty that I, uh, that I took and you seem to be, you seem to be okay with it. I'm just, I'm just aware of that again, as I just reread that poem and I love that poem. Thank you. I, I think you are very faithful translating. And at the same time, you have this, uh, this uh, creation, this, uh, but uh, above all, I feel you like a, a faithful translator, a very respectful translator. And yeah, and I thank you for that. <laughs> um, well, thank you. I, I, you know, I, as I keep on, I keep on quoting Valérie, you know, who says the poem is never finished, merely abandoned. And I feel like my translations of your poems are never finished, merely abandoned. Well, you know, now that of course I had to turn in the final draft to my yeah. publisher, to Saturnalia Books, I'm just so excited that the book is going to be coming out this October, I found out. Um, so of course I had to come up with final drafts. And, um, and then of course I look at them again and I'm thinking, well, should there be a, an article there? I took the article out. I mean, not the, yes. Should I, should there be a definite article? I, I made, I made choices, you know, I'm thinking in elegy where I would choose, you know, to leave out an, um, an article or, you know, just these smallest choices, you know, this is, this is what poets do. We think about the, every, every aspect of the, of the language. Um, yes, those details. Yeah. Uh, make the difference, right? Well, it's a different music. It's a different music, leaving an article in, taking an article out. There's a great flexibility in English around, around doing that, especially in poetry, it feels to me. So I made, those, I made those, those choices, and I guess those are my aesthetic choices as well. Um, I'm just wondering, is there anything else we'd like to tell everyone who's going to be listening? I don't know. I'm just very excited about the the coming for, of this new book. So, me yeah. too. I think it will really give English language readers a chance to read much more widely in your work. I know that there were many people who loved, as I continue to love, Book of Minutes, which were the prose poems. But it's just such a small portion of your work and now you'll get to see the full range of what it is you're 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 doing and um so maybe this is a good place for us to end and to say thank you to everybody and happy san jordi <laughs> <laughs>